it is a, a special honor and pleasure to address you on such an important topic as the future financing of uh, local and regional and the backbone infrastructure uh, is, and especially through the CEF financial mechanism. It is really also important that uh, today we try to discuss a little bit into more details the decarbonization part, uh, the one that we will talk further later on after this event. And uh, we need to join really forces if we want low emission mobility to take place. And if anybody, the cities are here, the ones who need to get engaged because uh, over 70% of all population lives in the cities. And that's why it is so important that uh, we address this issue together. And I'm looking forward also in the future for a close cooperation uh, with the new president and of course the entire team. And I know that uh, together we will be making substantial improvements. I certainly would like to find even new ways how we can get the information from the field faster from you. You are the ones who daily feel the pulse of, uh, of the citizens. And we know that if we don't get in touch with citizens, we don't address really the issues that they uh, worry about, then of course we are not completing our mission. So I'm really inviting you to even more cooperate uh, with us, with the Commission, that we focus on the right projects, that we will focus on the right tools, and that we, of course, together can achieve uh, the goals that we put uh, in front of ourselves. It is, if I was told correctly, over 350 of you from all parts of Europe. And that really creates this incredible network of diversity that we are so proud of on the EU level and that we really want to build on. But diversity needs also a very structural, systemic approach in order to deliver. So uh, this is yet another way, uh, part where we, I would love to co cooperate with you even stronger to understand what kind of tools can really foster this diversity and allow it to deliver the best results. Let me speak a couple of words with you on the transport itself. Uh, I do believe that transport is an important enabler, an important tool, mechanism, uh, in order to create uh, the sustainable society and in order to create prosperity, which, of course, leads to the ultimate goal, which is a peaceful coexistence of uh, all the nations. And uh, I'm not just talking uh, out of the blue, the transport, uh, just in the recent period has been contributing over 548 billion of value added in the EU and provide 11 million jobs per year. That is a substantial number. And if we add to this number that transport contributes to over 20% of all exports in products and over 18% of all exports in services that the EU generates, that really puts everything into the right perspective. So I'm sure that you can see the traces of that in your communities, in your municipalities, and I would invite you to pay even further attention to that because this is not only to enable the local economy, but it also helps to, to globalize the European solutions and to co-create the future of this planet. One of the most important missions that we need to fulfill is connectivity. Uh, and that, of course, itself uh, helps us to reach the remote areas of European Union and allows them to earn a decent living as well, being through tourism or being through entrepreneurships and startups and new business opportunities. So 
I would like to invite you as well to think about how to more efficiently connect remote areas with the cities. And I'm glad to announce, um, or just repeat the announcement that we already had, that Commission is now working closely with not only with smart villages and uh, smart uh, cities and cities of the future, but we also launched the program for smart villages trying to bring closely together the cities and villages to cooperate well and to uh, define a very effective uh, logistic networks to ensure that the, that their, the delivery, especially of fresh, fresh fruits and vegetables, can be well uh, accommodated. But not only that, villages are becoming a smart nodes, and it's really impressive what is going on in the modern farming these days. And I'm sure that cities can use this better and really integrate with the surroundings in a more effective way. And we are here to also engage with you on this topic. So if there are any good ideas, if there are any good programs, please let us know because we are already shaping up the financial tools and the platforms that are accommodating these uh, very important topics. While I'm saying that we are bringing lots of benefits, I also have to be very critical and uh, talk about the externalities which have a negative effect. Because transport, while it's bringing all this prosperity, the way how it's structured today, it's also generating many negative effects. And I would like to invite you in a very active positioning uh, on these externalities and we really would like to find effective solutions in order to address them, not in 20 or 30 years, but as soon as possible. And let me just mention a few of them. One is, for, of course, pollution. And in a pollution, we look from two perspectives. One is pollution of air and the other one is the noise pollution. And both of these are very, effect, very much affecting the health of our citizens. I'll share with you the estimate uh, that uh, we, uh, we came up with uh, that shows that over 120 billion euros per year is a, a socio-economical cost associated with these uh, externalities. And this is only one. Another one is equally important, which is congestion. And it's very much associated with cities. And congestion, in addition, uh, causes approximately 1 billion euros per day of expenses for European Union. Those are huge numbers. And I not gonna even start talking about fatalities on European roads and serious uh, injuries, which contribute additional 100 billion euros of external costs, socio-economical costs. So there is a huge field where we can get engaged and make a difference in a positive sense in European Union, and I'm very much uh, open for any good proposals that come from your side, uh, and we will build on them. And uh, the history shows that when we engage together, the results follow. And I will share one of them that the president mentioned in his opening speech regarding the investments in uh, smaller projects uh, later on. So, given the urgency of the, of the topic, I'm also, I have to say that uh, I'm quite uh, impressed by the report of Mr. Ribani on the, oops, sorry, I skipped one, uh, one important information. Um, okay. um, let's just talk about the report because it's really good. Uh, the report that uh, Mr. Ribani uh, provided on the low emission mobility uh, it's really of a great importance for us, and it's really, really useful. So uh, I'd really like to invite us to engage and act before it's too late. Uh, those, uh, I'm also uh, happy that we are launching now the de declaration on the deployment of a clean bus buses uh, later on today, because this is directly supporting uh, what the report is talking about. Of course, a transition uh, to low emission mobility, which seem to be one of the topics that can address these externalities that I talked about. 
uh, it uh, requires also substantial investments into infrastructure. Uh, so I'm uh, really uh, happy that the report of Mr. Uh, Putzi Ferrer on connecting Europe facilities, one of the EU's main transport infrastructure funds, is very engaging as well, and it uh, can contribute largely to a good future solutions. But let me first uh, address the issue of self-financing and 10 t before uh, moving on to the low emission strategy for mobility. The importance uh, of 10 t and CEF uh, is uh, growing by the year. Nine corridors that bring together all areas of European Union and uh, are really engaging and bring businesses together and citizens that they can use the advantage of the benefits of European Union. EU money and national funds uh, seem no longer be enough to support all the needs of these corridors. The estimated value or the investments needed is around uh, 750 billion euros. It's a large number. Considering that in the whole period between 2014 and 2020, we have 24 billion euros available for grants. But even though the gap is huge, there is hope. Because with the President Juncker's plan for uh, investments, we already proved in the first two years that with the well-prepared projects and all the necessary regulatory changes on a local level, we can attract a lot of additional private and institutional investments. And uh, already in this initial period, 17.5 billion euros of additional investments have been engaged. So that is a good news. And at the same time, the cohesion envelope under the CEF has also performed extremely well. But critic and critical model for this deployment, which I can tell you today, we almost deployed all the money from this financial period, was the principle use it or lose it. Until this principle was introduced, the stakeholders somehow did not take it serious enough the procedures, the deadlines, but now when member states know if they don't use the money, they will lose it, we have a much better response and a really high rate of high quality projects. And uh, most of the CEF funding has been three, four, six times oversubscribed, which means that there is a genuine need out there in the regions uh, for investments. 1% increase in the investments of infrastructure brings 1.5% 1, 1 increase of GDP over four years. But if you do it well, this can go up to 2.5%. And that is already a very important uh, figure. I can say that um, CEF has been successful in delivering results for transport infrastructure, uh, especially in line with President Juncker's priority, including the climate change and developing the digital single market, where transport is a big actor. More than 85% of SEF financing support, supports green modes of transport, such as rail. We see rail as the most important mode for decarbonization of transport along with the inland waterways because it is primarily uh, mostly electrified. And that's why we're encouraging mo uh, investments in rail, missing links, cross-border links, in order to make sure that freight can be shifted from roads to rail. CEF is also a front runner as regards innovative financial instruments, as I mentioned before, where green uh, the green projects are again primarily supported. Let me mention just the cleaner transport facility and the green shipping guarantee, which are two really good examples. In addition, a new self-transport blending call has recently been launched, combining 
1 billion euros of grants from CEF combined with EFSI, EU guarantees, and whenever possible with funds of National Promotional Bank or, of course, engaging with the private investors. That dramatically decreases the risk factor of some of the projects that would never be financed through either loans or through uh, private investments. And we already see some very encouraging results in that group of type of financing as well. We also have launched the work for the CEF midterm evaluation, which prepares the ground for the CEF II, uh, the successor under the next MFF. And I have read with a really great interest uh, the opinion of Mr. Putzi Ferrer, which I mentioned already before, as regards the future of CEF. And I fully share, I have to say, the view that increased resources will be needed going forward with a greater mix of blending of various sources of financing. So please, representatives of cities, take a very close look at that. Innovative financing also allows you to go and get financing directly. You no longer need member states to go through. So I hope this is an attractive proposal to you. The advancement of a safe urban agenda, as well as the need to further develop alternative fuels uh, along the 10T, as mentioned in several amendments to the report, are also points we will look at very closely. More generally, we welcome the positive assessment of the Committee of the Region, and that gives us a great encouragement in order to, uh, to move forward together. Of course, in order to maintain or increase the budget for CEF in the next MFF, I fully need your support. But I'm not just asking you for a blank paper or a blank support. Let's work on the projects. Let's work on the identification of areas where we can make really a difference. And then built on that, then our arguments will be much stronger. And we can fight together then to ensure the proper budgets that these uh, inf needed infrastructure investments in transport and also in services uh, will be supported, that you and your cities can move on with the modern mobility solutions that can support your development and development of SMEs, startups, and the larger uh, industries and new social frameworks that are so important for modern uh, lifestyle. Before I uh, conclude, I would do like to spend a couple of um, messages uh, regarding the low emission mobility, because I believe this is the this subject of today. And first of all, let me thank uh, again to Mr. Ribani for the report. A successful transition to low emission mobility depends strongly on the level of ambitious, as I already pointed out, of you, cities and regions. And there are several reasons why we need to move to a low emission, and many of them I mentioned already at the beginning through the socio-economical costs associated to it. But let me elaborate one more time. What are these most important points? First, transport is responsible for almost a quarter of European greenhouse gas emissions, for 24%, and out of that, 60% comes from roads. So very cl clear target that we need to go after. The second reason uh, is air pollution, and I already shared with you uh, the socio-economical costs uh, that is uh, associated with it, but let me share another figure with you. Uh, 450,000 premature deaths are related to this particular uh, polluter, and that is of course, a very striking information. And the third and final reason is also a strategic reason, a strategic for European Union and all member states, because more renewables makes us less dependent on imported oil, and there are major opportunities for our industry to develop and export innovative products. Uh, fluctuation of prices and the uh, lack of our own resources are very critical strategic weakness of European uh, Union. So we have very clear strategy on that. Uh, and it refers to three pillars. First, 
higher efficiency of the transport systems. And here, cities, you have everything in your hands. Modern mobility uh, models are in your hands. And we see some really encouraging, incredibly uh, future uh, looking models that are emerging all around European uh, cities. Please learn from each other and capitalize on that and move faster in order to reach the goals that we have for decarbonization and a better uh, utilization of the resources and people's time. Second, alternative energies for transport. Uh, we are engaging now with all member states uh, very strongly on alternative infrastructure, including biofuels, in order to support these new mobility models. Take a look at it and join forces and use the financial tools that help you to move faster towards these new uh, alternative uh, infrastructures for energies. And third, low and zero emission vehicles and vessels where, of course, you already probably have noticed that all over uh, Europe, uh, industry and the politicians are already setting the goals by when the move towards electrification and higher level of automation of uh, especially road transport and railways is predicted. And take a look at that and use the opportunity uh, for your strategic orientations. And together we can really set the right framework for co-financing as well when we see how ambitious you are. So far, the member states are not ambitious enough. So be you, I see in you the driver for a more ambitious plans and for a more concrete proposals. Let me also mention now a couple of projects and where, what already exists and where you can get engaged. First, the Commission proposed a framework for interoperable electronic tolling for Europe to strengthen the user pay and polluter pays principle, which will allow the cities, to especially big cities, to manage the traffic flows. You will be able to charge by demand if there is a congestion, you will be able to use the charging mechanism to, to, to redirect or to encourage people to use different hours. If there is a high pollution, you will be able to use the charging mechanism to charge the high polluters. Yeah? So please take a look at our first mobility package that came out on the 31st of May, where we clearly explained how do we envision that. And we've seen some first projects already out there being deployed when on the entry of the city, you can see uh, through, the, through the screens the dynamic charging depending on the conditions in the city. Uh, the Commission will also continue to support cities uh, to plan their mobility systems better. And here I would just like to uh, mention again the platforms that are already there. Our main tool, uh, of course, for this is sustainable um, urban mobility plans, or SAMP, where uh, it's uh, really exciting to see how many of you are already participating. And you can expect us to keep on working hard on, uh, um, to, on, on this platform to strengthen really your corporation, to strengthen also position of rail, inland waterways, and other alternatives that are uh, emerging like sharing and collaborative economy. But here it's also worth mentioning cycling and pedestrian zones, which are becoming more and more important in multimodality solutions. You may know that uh, two weeks ago, the blueprint for the European cycling strategy was handed over to me. Uh, and we will now examine it carefully to see what we can do uh, more and better at the EU level to support cycling. I invite you to have a look at this blueprint uh, as well, because it contains a lot of information uh, and ideas for all levels, not only for the EU. And again, here it's really important that bottom up and top down comes together. Doing something for nobody, it's worthless. Doing a lot and not having a political framework and all other tools that come along, it's also not efficient. So we do need to here work together. On the energy topic, uh, I'd like to also say a couple of words. The second part of our plan to cut emissions, of course, vo uh, focuses on energy. At present, you'd be surprised, but 94% of transport is still oil-based. No wonder that we are such a big polluter. 
So to encourage innovation, the Commission has proposed last November legislation to support the use of second generation biofuels and renewable energy. And this November, we will adopt an action plan on the infrastructure for alternative energies. We have already brought together more than 1 billion of private and public investments and almost 600 million of EU financial support for nearly 100 projects and we will commit more funds together with the action plan. It is obvious that cities and regions have a strong influence on how clean alternative energies actually are. So please come on board and work with us on this too. You're also once taking decisions about upgrading your bus fleets, for example. And today, just after this event, we will be launching declaration on clean buses. If your city or country or region has not yet signed up, I strongly recommend, I strongly invite, I'm, I'm inviting you really to come on board because together we can co-shape even stronger platform. I, we would like to achieve economy of volume that you can negotiate better prices together, that you have a bulk orders and negotiate a good price with the industry. And industry likes that because they want to have predictable volumes that then they can modernize and upgrade their, their production facilities. So it works both ways. So please use this because it's for the first time that we are moderating such a tool. Yeah. And last but not least, zero and low emission vehicles, uh, which uh, on the supply side, CO2 standards for cars and vans have proven effective to drive innovation. And we will present proposal for new standards in November. Please pay attention to create strong incentives for low, low and zero emission technologies. In 2018, the Commission will also present for the first time CO2 standards for heavy-duty vehicles, which again you can use in your strategies and approaches. At least in cities, electric vans, lorries and buses have a huge potential to reduce emission. <laughs> Present in the debate, noise. Noise will dramatically decrease with electrification of uh, transport. So, put all both of these into equation. Finally, to strengthen the demand side, we will propose a revision of the Clean Vehicle Directive, which deals with public procurement. This was identified as one of the weak points. The current directive simply is not effective, but that's what we hear from you. So we uh, took uh, your comments again seriously, and we're doing our job. So uh, we're very much looking forward uh, into the options of setting a procurement targets, a percentage of the fleet, for example, that needs to be clean or something like that. And this will be very relevant for the fleets of cities and regions. So my dear colleagues, president, board members, and um, all representatives of the cities, uh, I think together we can really make a difference in the mobility sector and especially ensure clean and uh, effective, innovative uh, transport can serve your needs and needs of your citizens and needs of uh, your uh, businesses. So once again, I'd like to uh, thank to Mr. Ribani, uh, Ribani's report and his overall positive assessment of the strategy for low emission mobility. And, uh, of course, I would like to thank him and all of the members who contributed to this. Uh, let me also just mention briefly the Mobility Week, which will take place this year from 16 to 22nd of December, and the Civitas Network uh, with its big conference happening this year from 27 to 29th of September in Torres Vedras in Portugal. I hope we'll see you there and we can continue these dialogues and we can continue to engage. It's exciting period in front of us. The climate change is happening in front of our eyes and we do have a power to act. Look at your hands, look at your pens, look at, at yourself and you will see people who can make a difference. Thank you very much.